Our oceans are home to a plethora of strange creatures, but we have only discovered one third of the ocean's creatures. Two thirds of the species out there have not even been discovered yet. But in today's video, I will be talking about 15 of the weirdest ocean creatures out there. Let's dive right in. If you're new here, I'm All Things Marine. Go ahead and click that subscribe button if you love the ocean as much as I do. And make sure you smash that notification bell as well so you don't miss out on any of the weird ocean creatures that I talk about. Number 15, the Zebra Mantis Shrimp. The zebra mantis shrimp is among the largest of the mantis shrimp species and they can grow to be almost a foot and a half in length. Much like the other mantis shrimp species, their eyes are incredibly complex and can see much more light than we can. In fact, when these animals are breeding, they glow, but the light that is given off by them glowing is only able to be seen by mantis shrimp. Unlike the peacock mantis shrimp's clubs, this mantis shrimp has appendages which look like a praying mantis's claws. These animals spend almost all their lives in their burrows and if they have a mate, they are with them for their entire lives and they both share the burrow. Number 14, the upside down jellyfish. This jellyfish is a very goofy looking creature, and just like what their name suggests, they are upside down jellyfish. Their bell is flat so that they can rest on the seafloor. Like corals do, these jellies have a symbiotic relationship with zooxanthellae, which are a type of algae that lives inside the animal's tissue. These jellies can actually swim like normal jellies as well, but they oftentimes are on the bottom. They are often found in estuaries and places with mangroves, and they feed primarily on zooplankton, which they catch with their oral arms, and they actually can sting people. The water they live in is usually shallow enough for the sunlight to penetrate through and reach the zooxanthellae. Number 13, the candy-striped flatworm. The candy-striped flatworm is a very pretty species of flatworm that can be found in the Mediterranean Sea and around the northern European coast. They are very small and only reach a few inches long, with several tiny eyes on its two front tentacles near its head. It looks nothing like other flatworms in terms of coloration and patterns, but it can oftentimes be confused for a sea slug due to the body shape. Number 12, the football jersey worm. This worm is a type of ribbon worm and can grow to a little over two feet in length. It is very oddly colored in terms of ribbon worm standards, with several white rings around the long and thin body. It can be found underneath rocks and usually scavenges during low tide. This worm is able to secrete a slime-like mucus that the sand and sediment around the worm can attach to and then allows the worm to blend into its surroundings in a form of camouflage. Since it is a type of ribbon worm, the head of the animal is not easily identified. Number 11, the sea mouse. The sea mouse is a type of segmented worm. However, you would not know that until you flip the organism on its back because the segments are not visible due to the several hairs all on the organism's backside. These hairs are also known as setae and on the sea mouse, these can fluoresce green and other colors. It gets its name from the mouse-like appearance when it washes up on the beach. Much like the upside down jellyfish, this animal has also been found on the bottom and scavenges. The setae or hairs that this animal has, has actually been used to produce the largest nano wire ever, which can actually be a very useful application for the medical field. Number 10, the blue glaucus. This nudibranch, aka sea slug, is also called the blue dragon sea slug and it lives in the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans. And they can actually take stinging cells from the Portuguese man of war, which is one of their prey items, and use those stinging cells in its skin. However, 
This creature, while it can sting you, is not threatening at all and can reach only about an inch in length. The creature has an air bubble inside it to assist with buoyancy and floating in the levels of the water column. A group of these beautiful creatures is called a blue fleet and these creatures can, yes, sting people with their stored stinging cells. They are not bin thick like their nudibranch relatives because they actually travel a lot up and down throughout the water column. Number 9, the giant siphonophore. This massive and very strange animal is actually a colony of animals which all work together to form a large and very weird creature. Much like the Portuguese man of war, this animal is made out of zoids with a variety of different jobs. They are found in very, very deep sea habitats and can grow to over a hundred feet long. The creature can be longer than blue whales, but they are only about as girthy as a broomstick is. They mainly feed on zooplankton like fish larvae and smaller crustaceans as well. Due to this animal's very deep habitat, once the animal is brought up to the surface, the animals actually pop as a result of less pressure being exerted on them. Number 8. The Tasseled Wabigong Possibly one of the most camouflaged sharks out there, this shark is an ambush predator that lives on the bottom and blends in with the rocks on coral reefs almost perfectly. It lives near Australia and Indonesia and it waits for small fish to get within striking range and then sucks the fish into its very large mouth that is surrounded by skin flaps. The animal has been known to bite divers that get too close and make the creature feel threatened. However, this shark has not been known to fatally attack anyone and only reaches around 4 feet in length. Number 7, the Reticulate Whip Ray. This ray is very pretty in its pattern and it is a part of a group of rays called whip rays. These animals have bodies that are 5 feet long, but their tails can actually be 3 times as long as they are. They can reach lengths of up to 15 feet in total and can reach weights of up to 300 pounds. They can be found around coral reefs and estuaries around Australia, Africa, and Asia. They are bottom feeders and they eat crabs and mollusks as well as small fish. Their very long tail is used to help them balance and is also used to help them steer. Beware though because these rays do harbor a stinger and if stung, the venom and the barbed spine will do a lot of damage. Number 6, the Ribbon Eel. Ribbon eels are very odd creatures that change both sex and color throughout their lives. At the beginning of their lives, as long as they are juveniles, they are black in color with the yellow dorsal fin on top. The eels are males when they are bright blue in color with the same yellow dorsal fin and once the eel is fully grown at around 4 feet, it changes to yellow in color and also turns into a female eel and can then lay eggs. Ribbon eels can be found on coral reefs and are oftentimes hiding in burrows or hiding in holes in coral reefs with just their heads poking out. The eels are known to eat fish and shrimp and their nostrils are very key to their success in detecting prey by detecting vibrations in the water. Number 5, the opa. This fish is also called the moonfish which is ironic because the ocean sunfish looks similar to it. It is actually a warm-blooded fish and is very round and looks like a silver pancake of sorts. They can weigh a few hundred pounds and they eat fish and squid and they fall prey to large sharks such as great whites or, you guessed it, humans. They do not use their tails to swim as much as they use their large pectoral fins to glide through the water. They are found in both tropical and temperate waters around the globe. Number 4, the leaf vent anglerfish. This fish is a strange deep sea specimen that, like the barrel eye which I have talked about before, is a transparent fish. Like other anglerfish, they use a glowing lure to attract prey, which includes small fish, and the reason for this fish not being very colorful 
is because, well, when you live down deep in the ocean, there is no need for color because light does not reach that far down. Like all anglerfish, the males are exceptionally smaller than the females, and these fish never know when they may mate again. So once they find a mate, the male bites onto the female and eventually becomes part of the female, and constantly provides her with sperm whenever she needs to lay eggs. Number 3. The Pinecone Fish also called the pineapple fish, it is easy to see how this fish has both of these as common names. It looks like it could be either a pineapple as a fish or a pinecone as a fish. They are small fish and they grow to 7 inches long and they are found in the West Indo-Pacific in coral reefs or rocky areas. At times they can be seen in larger schools though. On their heads they have a special organ which actually can produce light and this organ is called a photophore. However, scientists are baffled by this because they still do not know the reasoning behind why they have this organ. Number two, the great frigate bird. The males of this bird are what are the truly weird ones. These birds are found on islands and along the coast in the Pacific and Indian Oceans, and the males have a pouch on their throat which is bright red and this is actually connected to mating. These birds will inflate this to attract females that are looking to mate. This bird is pretty large seeing as it can have a wingspan of 7 feet, and they hunt fish that are close to the surface of the water. These birds are actually really, really good at flying. They are expert gliders and expend very little energy when they are flying. Shown here is an example of a mating ritual. And finally, number one, Remora. Chances are you have seen this fish before, and this is probably the most familiar creature on this list. They swim underneath sharks or rays, and they feed on the leftovers that the shark or ray or whatever animal they're swimming under leaves behind. They also feed on the parasites on the animal, and they can reach almost three feet in length and they lack a swim bladder because they basically hitch a ride on anything they can. In fact, they can attach to the bottom of boats and even us. Very interesting. I chose this one as number one because one, it is something so weird, yet many of us already know about this. I hope you all enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. And if so, make sure you smash that like button. Go ahead and comment below what the best fish or creature on this list is, in your opinion.